So there's a concept called the five plant garden. And that is where you pick five species, five cultivars, five hybrids, and you just group them together. And you think about using three of one or five of one, depending on how much space you have. But this is a quick way of putting together a garden. So for instance, the garden that I have right here is made up of purple coneflower. It's made up of bee balm. It's made up of blazing star, agastache, or also called anise hyssop. And of course, always add your grasses, little blue stem. So what you have here is pollinator and beneficial insect heaven. Another kind of garden that can be served by the five plant concept is that wet area in your yard. I know a lot of people talk about how you should drain it or figure out something to do with it, build it up with more soil. Instead, let's find the plants that like that situation. So for the low spot, the wet spot, let's take a look at the great blue lobelia and the swamp milkweed. And then there's the beautiful, beautiful cardinal flower. And then we have turtle head, which honestly looks like a turtle. And this is the Pennsylvania Carex or Pennsylvania Sedge. And these are not the only plants that would work in a wet space, but these are ideas. You can always, you know, if you can't find a species or a hybrid or a cultivar of a plant, you can always look for something else that'll fit that niche. In the five garden concept, sometimes we're dealing with competitive plants. So for instance, in this five plant garden, we have Garden View Scarlet Bee Balm. We have Pycnanthemum Muticum, which is also called the Clustered Mountain Mint. And it runs like the wind, but oh, it smells so good and attracts every pollinator under the sun. We have our Autumn Sun cut leaf redbeckia, which can get seven feet tall and likes to self-seed, I will admit. Then we have our little sun drops, which will also self-seed and fill in the spaces in between. And to front it all, don't forget your grasses. This is our lovely little prairie drop seed, which turns autumn colored, pumpkin colored in the fall. Carex is for wet shade, wet sun, so how about a five plant plan for the shade? And I love the shade. It is the place where you relax, where you take deep breaths. There are trees and there are all these plant compounds in there helping you de-stress and sort of mellow out. And in shade, it's not as much about the flowers as it is about the texture. So we bring in coral bells and the texture of these coral bells, notice that they have sort of a, a hairy effect to them. And that's because of our native Heuchera villosa, which likes our clay soils and our summers and winters the way they are. So look for those Heucheras that have fuzzy leaves. And then we put with them our beautiful native lady fern, and we put in, again, I love Carex pennsylvanica, our Pennsylvania sedge. And then to brighten up, how about a couple of the variegated cultivars of our Jacob's Ladder, which has a beautiful blue flower in the spring, but then the rest of the season gives you that little extra burst of something. When creating any garden, and especially our five plant gardens, you can always add in special little pockets of herbs because herbs bring out all kinds of pollinators and beneficial insects. So chives, and yes, I know they can spread, but they bring in all kinds of butterflies and bees and beneficial insects. We also have parsley, which you have to plant enough for you and for the butterflies who will come and eat it all. We have basil, which bring in the parasitoid wasps that take out some of our uh, predatory caterpillars, if that's how you think about it with your tomato plants when you see the tomato hornworm. And don't forget something to cover the ground. Keep the ground covered. And what could be better than something that is not only beautiful with gorgeous flowers, but also gives you fruit.